This week in Nerf, we've got blasters on shelves early and more details about the new rival blasters. I'm Jangular, and every Saturday morning, this is your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. Now, I want to actually start this episode off on a slightly different note, uh, something I'm not excited to talk about, something a lot of you probably won't be happy to hear, but um, after next week's episode, we will be going on hiatus. The channel, there will be no videos, there will be nothing being uploaded, and Saturday mornings will not have This Week in Nerf episodes here at least for two months. I'm going to do a video discussing why and going more into detail uh, on the reasoning behind it and, and what I'm hoping to accomplish during it, but I just wanted to give you a heads up and let you know that uh, it is going to happen. I hate that I'm doing it, that it feels like I have to, that it's necessary, but uh, hopefully it will yield better results in the future. And again, we'll talk more about it in the future. Um, so yeah, just wanted to start that on a bit of a bit of a bummer note. Um, but yeah, hopefully you all understand. I I'm potentially going to see if some other people may be interested in running some This Week in Nerf episodes in the interim while I'm away. Uh, but we'll see how that pans out. I don't know. I, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot that I need to talk about and we'll take a whole separate video to do so. So just giving you a heads up now rather than right when it happens. And real important to note is anyone that's supporting on Patreon, I am pausing the Patreon. Don't worry. You don't have to do anything. I'm not going to keep charging people while I'm not making content. That's just foolish. It seems not right at all. So I don't want to do that. So don't worry. You don't got to do anything. You're not going to get charged while I'm not making videos. I'll make sure of it. Uh, let's get into the reason you're actually here, and that is the news. So let's go ahead and start off with something we talked about last week, which was the Mercury. Uh, that little spoiler and teaser images, we now have more images and hands-on with the blaster. Uh, we have the Facebook page, Nerf Crazy Club, uh, posting a bunch of images of the blaster itself. And then there was another post from a separate user, I believe, that was an actual video of them using the blaster. And namely, the big thing with this is that Bolt Prime that we talked about is actually switchable. So you can unscrew it and put it on the other side of the blaster, which is... Pretty cool. I definitely like that it's not just sticking out on both sides and it creates excess bulk that you don't need. You can put it on whichever side you need, which is something I very much like. So kudos to the design choice there, Hasbro. I like that. Uh, now for a blaster this small, I'm not certain how much I like the Bolt Action Prime overall. As you can see in the video that I'll link down below, priming it causes the blaster to shake and wiggle and, and just not feel stable. So it'll be fun, I'm sure. Again, the purpose of toys, fun, but uh, it may not be the most practical. Uh, and I also worry about the bolt sled at higher spring loads, uh, like what we put in the Kronos. So I, we'll see as people get it in hand. I, I don't know when this is going to hit, but maybe sooner than we expected. Now that people, I, I'm assuming this is probably a... Uh, design sample or something like that, as we often see when these early leak blasters get into someone's hands. Unless we start seeing them in multiple people's hands, then we may be onto something really early. But uh, the other thing in the image posts from the Facebook page was a more up close look at the Jupiter, which is the Nerf rival full length blaster. Jupiter. What an unfortunate naming choice as pretty much anybody in the hobby will immediately associate the Jupiter to Out of Darts Jupiter Blaster, which is just a beautiful, beautiful thing. So this is, a, it'll create a little bit of confusion between people just getting into the hobby or just buying blasters for fun and those within the hobby, but it's not anything we can't handle. Regardless, talking about the blaster itself, it is a bolt action blaster that looks kind of like the uh, the Mercury, just longer with a bipod you can put on. And uh, I do like the way the bolt action looks. It looks, uh, well, I guess kind of like, I think it's the Busby, like Busby Snipe style. Uh, something I don't know yet is whether or not you'll be able to push that bolt 
over onto the other side so that if you're left-handed, you can use that rather than right-handed prime. I don't know yet. It looks like there's a uh, rail on top that may be in the way. I don't know if that's removable. I don't know if there's extra shell on the other side that's going to stop that. There's a bunch of things we still don't know, but it is nice to have a higher res image. Well, not super high res. We can at least see the basic shape now. So that is definitely nice and something we will be looking forward to in the future as more details become available. So let me know what you think about these two blasters being relatively similar, at least on the surface. Again, we haven't seen the performance of the Jupiter, but we'll see. I don't know. Fingers crossed it's good. Regardless, let's talk about some more blasters. These ones are on shelves and a bit early. Granted, not that early, but both the Overwatch Rival Blasters and the Shadow ICS-6 have been found in stores. Now, the release date of January 1st means we're like a week and a half early-ish on, on the, the Rival one, so it's not that bad big of a, a, a thing, but if you really want to get your hands on them, GameStop seems to be the place to go for these to get them early. Although I believe Think Geek actually has them available now as well. So if you've got any of those locations nearby, definitely go check them out if you are on the hunt for these blasters. I know I will be getting a Diva Blaster because how could I not? Uh, <laughs> It's still cool that these are available a little bit early. If you wanted to surprise someone with a Christmas present, you got an Overwatch lover in the family that also likes blasters, boom, perfect surprise gift earlier than they expected. They did it for you. It, it's very considerate of people to leak things early or, or put things on shelves early. Uh, now the ICS-8 or 6 uh, Shadow Blaster is... Something that was posted in a Singapore Nerf group and is available at Toys R Us in their area. So, not going to see it in the U.S., uh, but still, start looking. Maybe soon. If you're overseas, probably sooner than uh, here in North America. Regardless, definitely always fun to see things start trickling out. As I talk about every single time we go into release season, you start looking at these things when they're going to hit early and getting excited about going and trying to find them. So now is the time. Get out there and get hunting. Uh, something else to talk about today, I want to talk about Blaster Hub. Now, Blaster Hub is a website that started as Blaster Labs and was a website for several different content creators to write articles about Nerf, about various aspects of Nerf. And one of the biggest contributors is Buff Daddy. Now, Buff Daddy eventually became the sole contributor to Blaster Hub, and he now is the owner of Blaster Hub, which is fantastic news because Buff Daddy is an amazing resource and, resource and asset to this community. I love the work he does, and he is just someone that I feel deserves more recognition than he gets because he is constantly writing up articles, working on things, and trying things out for people. And... As much as I love video content and watching videos, having written resources is invaluable and something that needs to continue to be a part of this community and this hobby. So if you haven't in the past been a reader of Blaster Hub or maybe wasn't the biggest fan of certain contributors, Buff Daddy is for the time being the only contributor and was one of, if not the best contributors. So. Give him, a, give him another shot. Now that he is in control and running the ship, I'm looking forward to what he does with that site and what a wonderful resource it becomes. Especially since we're taking a break here. Uh, that is a great place to go to get news and insight and things on the Nerf hobby. So go check that out. Uh, add it to your bookmarks. I think it's well worth it if you're always interested in staying uh, up to date on things and getting reviews more in depth potentially than uh, a video review like I would do. Written word has, uh, has a way with things to be able to let you reread things and really, really understand everything that's said. So that said, let's talk about the mod of the week. This week comes to us from Slater, and this is his quick flag long shot. This is an integration of a cross bolt and a long shot, which I don't see super often. Normally it's a Centurion and a long shot. This is slightly different. And I actually like the way that the lines on this work. I like the way it flows into the cross bolt in the back. I think they did a good job kind of blending the two 
and, and making it mesh. This is actually their first integration and you don't see any massive blotches of putty or, or kind of awkward shapes in places and the paint job is a kind of a two-tone deep red to red that kind of just looks nice a very red theme all across um the internals aren't a joke either and it's just it was a nice i don't want to say simple but not overtly embellished build and i think at times that's a great thing it's you know i often enjoy showcasing things that are over the top or crazy or sometimes something simple and clean and nice is just fantastic to look at and i think he did a really good job with this so kudos on your first integration that came out uh much better than anything i would have done for my first integration so uh definitely go check that out learn all about the build and what's inside of it and the purpose of the build in the link down below one last thing to talk about this week of course the video of the week and this comes to us from blaster show this is something I've been waiting for from Blast Show. This is their Ragnar Oktoberfest Stalking Dead gameplay footage. Uh, I was actually running with him for a short period during the Stalking Dead, so I, I knew he was going to be doing a video, so I was excited to see his perspective of it. Uh, he takes a kind of lighthearted approach, adding some jokes and some, some uh, little moments in there that really kind of lightens the mood and, and just brings out the fun in the video, in the gameplay, and the hobby, and the event, and all of that. And I just, I really enjoyed this video and feel it's something you should all take some time to watch. And something that uh, surprised me when I clicked on over, he has less than 100 subscribers, and that seems just wrong to me. So I really, really would like it if all of you would go over to his video, give it a watch. If you like it, hit the subscribe button, let him know I sent you, and send some love his way, because the more good videos like this get made to showcase the events and the fun that our hobby is, the more chance that people will stumble onto them, see them, and gain interest in that side of our hobby, which then leads them to everything else. So definitely go check that video out. It's right over here. And uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you all next week for... Wow, I feel kind of sad saying this. The, the last episode of This Week in Nerf before I take my break. I made myself sad. But anyways, as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.